Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today, we're going to discuss how to help kids develop a growth mindset. Okay. Well, um, modern psychology knows about how belief systems uh, impact our own abilities, uh, fuel our behavior and predict our success. And much of that understanding uh, it comes from the work of Carol Dweck. Over 30 years ago, Dweck and her colleagues became interested in students' attitude about failure. They noticed that some students rebounded while other students seemed devastated by even the smallest setbacks. After studying the behavior of thousands of children, Dr. Dweck coined the terms fixed mindset and growth mindset to describe the underlying beliefs people have about learning and intelligence. She defines a growth mindset as a self-perception or self-theory about a, or self-theory people hold about themselves. When students believe they can get smarter, they understand the effort, they understand that effort makes, their, makes them stronger. Therefore, they put in extra time and effort that leads to higher achievement. And in the following video, uh, we're, we're gonna watch how growth mindset can make a huge difference in the life of a person. Do you know this guy needs some hints? As a kid, he struggled with school. He dropped out of college after only six months and for money would return Coke bottles for five cent refunds. Okay, one more. He helped found a company called Apple. You see, Steve Jobs wasn't born rich or a genius, but he did have a growth mindset. Simply put, a growth mindset means that with effort, you can train your brain to get smarter. That's right. Scientists have learned that a human brain acts a lot like a muscle and using your brain can actually cause it to grow and even get heavier. You see, when you learn new things, tiny connections in the brain multiply and get stronger. The more you challenge your mind to learn, the more brain cells you grow, leading to a stronger, smarter brain. As a result, things that once seemed hard actually become easier. People with a growth mindset know that it takes effort to train your brain. Start by exploring new information. Learning something new can be scary, and you might get frustrated, but it's only because you haven't yet made the connections your brain needs. It's up to you to take charge. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Just like exercising your body, repeating an action builds strength. Read, write, or say something important at least five to ten times to make it stick. Most importantly, don't give up. When something is hard, that's when you need more effort, not less, to build those connections in the brain. Say, here's one more. Do you know this person? Need a hint? The growth mindset, they can train their brain to become stronger and smarter. So the big question researchers had asked themselves is, can we change mindsets? And if so, how we do that? These began a series of interventions and studies that prove that we can indeed change, uh, we can change our mindset from fixed to growth. And when we do it, it leads to increased motivation and achievement. Uh, 
A fixed mindset assumes that our character, intelligence, and creative ability are static, which we can't change in any meaningful way. For a fixed mindset person, avoiding failure at all costs become a way of maintain, maintaining the sense of being smart or skilled. Believing that your qualities are carved in stone, as in a fixed mindset, creates an urgency to prove yourself over and over and over, and this, this is exhausting. On the other hand, a growth mindset thrives on challenge and sees failure not as evidence of, of, of on intelligence, but as a facilitator for growth and for stretching out our existing abilities. Out of these two mindsets, which we manifest from a very, very early age, springs a great deal of our behavior, our relationship with success and failure in both our professional and personal context, and ultimately our capacity for happiness. So why, why is it important to develop a growth mindset? And that's why we are here today, right? To answer this question. Well, a growth mindset creates a passion for learning rather than a hunger for approval. Its hallmark is the conviction that human qualities like intelligence and creativity, and even our relational capacities like love and friendship can be cultivated through effort and a deliberate practice. People with growth mindset are not discouraged by failure. They don't actually see themselves as failing in any of those situations. They see themselves as learners. In summary, a growth mindset helps you overcome obstacles when learning something new, uplift your self-esteem, which won't be significantly affected by events, and it makes more likely to develop your full potential. What strategies can be used to help kids develop a growth mindset? That's a great question, right? Well, helping kids to develop a growth mindset is actually part of our third grade curriculum. In the unit of inquiry, who we are, our third graders uh, reflect about their interactions and, and how those interactions help them learn about who they are as learners. We keep reinforcing uh, the, the a growth mindset through fourth grade and fifth grade, but this is something that can be developed throughout uh, our lives because we are permanent learners. New research shows that the brain is more like a muscle. It changes and it gets stronger when you use it. Scientists have been able to show how the brain grows and gets stronger when you learn. Muscle becomes larger and stronger with exercise, right? When we stop using them or exercising, our muscles tend to shrink and we get weaker. Most people don't know that when we practice and learn new things, part of our brains change and get larger just like a muscle. This is true even for adults. So it's not true that someone, that some people just cannot learn. You can improve your abilities as long as you practice and use good strategies. And for example, learning a new language, right? It, it is a good example of our brain plasticity. Whether we like it or not, we make mistakes. A reliable sign of, of making a mistake is usually the experience of you know, feeling upset or sensing any kind of discomfort. Most of the people I know, including myself, we grew up thinking that mistakes were damaging or to be avoided at all costs. In school, for instance, we would tend to correlate errors with low intelligence and failure. And basically, the more mistakes we make, the less capable we are. That's what we use, we tend to think, or we, we were taught. For others, however, mistakes are opportunities to learn something. Uh, the magic part uh, of mistakes, and that it's referred in this title, is reflected by the learning tied in with it. Instead of being taught how to avoid mistakes, 
Some people cultivate the art of turning a mistake into an opportunity to gain wisdom. A simple way to start changing to a growth mindset is by the use of a little word, yes. In essence, the word means a realization that some things are worth waiting for, and those things take work. It's not always easy, but the power of this small word allows for success. Who doesn't love a good Sesame Street song, right? This one teaches us about the importance of making mistakes and the power of yet. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, how does it go? Right. enjoy it while they learn about the importance of give ourselves time and chance to learn and improve. Dweck says teachers can challenge students' fixed mindsets, beliefs by using effort or process praise for engagement, perseverance strategies, improvement, and, and, and the things they lack. Uh, in the following video, we're going to watch a t-shirt that uses praise in the process strategy to develop a growth mindset. <laughs> I want you to jot down on your post-it your next little goal for yourself. Having a growth mindset means that you believe that your intelligence is malleable. It's time for writers. Writers. Writers Workshop. A writer's workshop model helps promote growth mindset because it gives students an opportunity to really focus on the process and the habits of mind of what it means to be a writer. Giving ourselves little goals or directions help us grow as writers. You want to make your characters move and talk so your reader can really picture them? Awesome goal. Go get started on that. One thing I really focus on in my classroom is praising the process rather than praising the product. That's such an important goal. You want your reader to really be able to read it. So you're going to make sure you have really clear spaces between your words. Super important. Go get started. So rather than saying this product was really good, it breaks down for students what they did that helped them to accomplish that goal. You really make your characters come to life. You're so like, I'm lost. And it helps them to think about how they can continue to grow and emphasize those strategies in their work. I wanted to teach you how to write a lead that kind of hooks the reader. I also think that process praise helps build a growth mindset because it starts to become the language that students then use. You also have already thought of a problem. So if I'm praising their process, then they can start to focus on the different things that they're doing well in their work, and they then can begin to internalize that language and also use that in supporting partners. My goal was to... Okay, so once again, as we have mentioned before, we can see the tremendous power of language, right? You might be wondering what, it, what this may sound at home, for example, probably something like, uh, oh, I saw you work very hard and I'm proud that you did your best. For example, in a situation that the student didn't get the, the top uh, grade or just got a, I don't know, like a, a three or a four, 
you can you can praise the process by saying that you can notice that they work really hard and that you are proud that they did their best. Or if, for example, if a child went on an, in an entire soccer game without scoring a goal, you can say, oh, but you run a lot. And even when you got tired, I saw that you were putting a lot of effort into it. So that means praising the process. So, um, challenges empower us to try new things and help us keep growing. Indeed, uh, but the, the, the first thing we have to, to do is to embrace challenges. Let, let's reflect on this quote from Henry Ford. Uh, if you think you can do a thing or think you can't do a thing, you're right. And I agree 100% with the part that if you think you can't do a thing, you're right. Think is the key word here in this phrase, and it's very powerful because thinking is a start. Acting, learning, adjusting, those are the much needed next steps. If you're convinced that you can't do a thing, you're right. But if you think you can, but you never act, then you're wrong. It is okay to be confident, but also you have to deliver some action, right? Think some energy and effort in, into what you think you can do and prove it. So wrapping up all, all these ideas, everyone in the world has a way of perceiving things. We call this a mindset. You have a mindset, your friends have a mindset and your teacher has a mindset. We can choose to look at the world in a way what make, that makes us feel stronger and happy or in a way that make us feel frustrated and weak. People with a growth mindset know they can get better by working hard and trying different strategies. They keep trying even when things are tough and, and they say things such as, I can't do this yet, or mistakes help me learn. People with a fixed mindset feel differently as if they are stuck with the way things are. A fixed mindset happens to anyone at some time or another, but it's important we choose to have a growth mindset. Keep trying and stick with challenges. As usual, we share some additional resources at the webpage at the counselor's website, so you can access them if you want to, to learn more about this. This uh, uh, video, it's with, the, with Carl Dweck, the, the researcher that developed this whole idea of growth, growth mindset, and it's a very interesting TED Talk. So if you want to know more, the resources are there for you to access. And if you, want, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to unmute yourself. Ms. Denise, I would just like to add that like in everything else that um, we want our children to do or our students to do, we must lead by example and model for them that growth mindset as parents and as teachers so that they can also uh, acquire it. So if you are a parent who constantly thinks that you can't do or complain about failures or times when you're not successful, of course, that will be um, imitated by your children. But if in turn, you are somebody who sees failure as opportunities for learning, that will also reflect on their, the children. Yeah, definitely. And as, as a teacher from the previous video was saying, language is extremely important. We model through language, what kind of language are we using to talk to ourselves? Our children are listening to that. And the way we talk to ourselves is a great example of modeling. I mean, like if we use a, a positive self dialogue, uh, it, it's a great way to show them how we should treat ourselves in a positive way. I can't do this yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep working on it. I'm gonna try to find other ways to do it. And if I, in a, and if I cannot, because 
sometimes we get to a point in which, you know, we, we can't move any forward. We look, we look for help. And, and that's also another part of, of, of helping students learn about growth mindset is to ask for help. There's nothing wrong to ask for help. Uh, actually asking for help is a very brave action. It's, a, it's acknowledging that we get stuck into a point that in which we need an extra a pair of hands to help us with something. So first, the power of language and uh, how are we modeling uh, our kids to ask for help. Um, last, the, the previous week, uh, not last one, the other one, <laughs> we were talking about struggles that make kids stronger. And uh, these are great opportunities to connect those, those moments of, you know, of um, letting kids make mistakes and using those opportunities to uh, help them understand that those are chances to learn more about ourselves and what, uh, what we can get from those situations in which, in which things uh, don't go the way we expected, right? So seeing mistakes as, as learning opportunities. Yes, Ms. Batista, I would like to add about mistakes that because I've seen a lot of students being guilty about feeling guilty about making mistakes. And it's so important that we reinforce them that mistakes are things, actions that we do that are not on purpose. And we shouldn't feel guilty about mistakes, but rather see them as, as you mentioned in the presentation, an opportunity to learn and then commit to actually learn something from mistakes and not committing the same mistakes over and over again. And also um, when praising our, our children, I love that video that you share about the importance of language. And I really like how the teacher praise also the strategies the children use. So it's important to praise the effort and also the strategies they use so that they know what strategies are working for them and which ones they might have to change or adjust according to the situation. Yeah, thank you, Roxana, exactly. And, and, and that gives us also the, the chance to set up new goals so they can understand that this is an ongoing process, that it's not, it's not coming to an end because we, uh, we uh, finished with this product. Learning, it's an ongoing process. And okay, I finished this project and then I'm ready to, to move on to the next goal or to the next task. Uh, that's, that's the difference when we praise the process versus when we praise the product. It, when we praise the product, it's like, okay, that's it. We're done with it. And there's nothing else after that. In, 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 in when we praise the process, we start, we keep setting new goals that provide uh, the opportunity to the, to the child to learn about uh, that learning is an ongoing process and how he can, um, a, how do you say that? When you, a, when you can, cuando te puedes superar a ti mismo, when you can uh, succeed in, in further. Uh, so this is uh, the, the good thing about praising the process rather than praising the product. Well, if you don't have any other questions or comments, I want to thank you for being here with us today. And uh, of course, if you have any other topic that you would like us to present or discuss in these spaces, please let us know by email. We are looking forward to hear from, from you. Thank you very much for joining us today and see you in our next webinar. Bye.